Hi, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I did a poll on Instagram, giving you the space to ask me whatever questions and kind of want to get to know me on a personal level. And I've gotten a lot of questions, but I'm just going to be covering just a few today. This is my very first time. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, and comment. And I look forward to interacting with you in the comments. Let's get into it. All right. So the first question is, what do you wish more people knew about you? I love this question. And there's a side of me where it's like, I don't really care what people think about me, but then there's another side where it's like, I wish they actually knew this about me and not having a perception about me on this. Example, if I cared about what people think about me, I know some people may think that I'm way too bold, I'm way too out there, I'm way too like hardcore, and I don't have like some sort of heart certain things like I don't really care maybe I am conceited but there's been many cases where I have fallen short I have flaws and I disappoint people and they're angry with me and there's only going to be a small group of people that are actually going to get over it and forgive you know i wish people knew about me that i'm very loving towards other people i really do care about other people i care about where they come from because i also come from a very humbling beginnings i come from hardship i come from really hard times so i understand and i i feel for people and i came to love for people especially when someone has gone through so much because i want to live a better life and the quality of my life depends on my relationships of other people in my life. I knew that I have to work the hardest on me and I, I can't really control what people think about me. All I can do is just lead by example and I've learned to love people where they're at. I learned to just choose love over ego. There's been many cases where I've disappointed people and that's just what's gonna happen. Human beings are gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna make mistakes. And if we put human beings on a pedestal that we're not going to make mistakes, that's really the case on them. So I've learned to not let it eat me up when people don't really forgive me or don't remember the times we had a great time together. And this one time that I just decided to blow up because we all have a human experience and they don't forgive you, it's really, on them and don't get me wrong like it's it hurts it hurts when people don't forgive you but the only thing you can do is forgive yourself and forgive them and maybe eventually they'll come around but it's important to continue to lead by example it's important to focus on your dreams your vision work on you the most out of anybody and I feel like God takes care of the rest so when you go into situations with a good heart working on your heart everything else seems to follow. Another perception too, like people have of me is they think I'm like extremely extroverted and I'm really not. Um, <laughs> it takes a lot for me to uh, get to a point where I'm like extremely crazy around people and the life of the party and things like that. I know some of the traits that I've learned that from was from my mom. She is the big time party like all about her here I am we're gonna bring the party that's the life of the party that's my mom and I love that about her and I learned that so much from her but my natural state it's not that I'm actually quite of an introvert I enjoy just <laughs> being at home just watching YouTube and journaling or something I've learned to find the good in that and that's really where I'm most comfortable in and I used to like go out and party and things like that before I got into personal development before I got into business I feel like business has taught me a lot about myself about life in general about other people and I know myself today that I'm definitely an introvert and most people don't really know that <sighs> you know sometimes it irks me because I wish they would like ask me more questions to see the real me and where I grew up and who were my mentors growing up. I really wish they took the time to really get to know me instead of having those perceptions of me. But what are you gonna do? People are people. They're gonna judge you. They're gonna have perceptions of you and you just have to keep going and do what it is that you love. 
regardless what they think of you. Before, like I used to care of what people thought about me and I used to think that I had to prove myself all the time. To be quite honest with you, I've come a long way. <laughs> My best advice always is to work on you, work on just changing your heart in a good way, work on your mental and emotional skills. Deep down inside, I may look as confident as ever sometimes i'm shaking inside everything to me it's not always so comfortable even to sometimes when i have to like be in front of the camera i want you to be able to see what it's like in my life and i'm not always this like woohoo like very enthusiastic i mean there's stuff that i'm really passionate about you're not gonna control the fact that people are gonna judge you and put you in a box put you in a label and so you just gotta keep going keep doing you keep finding yourself out and keep doing the things that you love. That was a big mouthful. Great question though. I love this question, this is so cute. <laughs> what inspires you? A lot of things inspire me. People that inspire me are hard workers, people that actually go out of their ways to making their dreams a reality truly does inspire me. Not to sound egotistical or conceited, but sometimes I inspire myself when doing things that are very uncomfortable for me. Like this is uncomfortable just getting real about myself with you because usually when I'm creating videos, it's all about, okay, so let's help you make more money. Let's help you increase your income. Let's help you build your business. Let's help you have amazing conversations, relationships with people. I guess I flourish in that way, but when it comes to personal, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, I get inspired. It's like, wow, I know I tell myself to do things that are very uncomfortable for me. I know recently I went to a church service and they did karaoke and I got my butt up there and I started singing, not knowing anybody. I was nervous. <laughs> I can't believe I was elected to do the karaoke. I wasn't my best self and I knew that that was something extremely so uncomfortable for me. Even though I love to sing, I still get uncomfortable singing in front of people. I did it for me. It just makes me realize that I really want to live the best life ever. People that inspire me, we're talking about like Ryan Serhant, Brent Cardone, John C. Maxwell, who else? Lewis House, oh, and Ali Abdal, I can't even say his name. I love surrounding myself with people who I can learn from, who are better than me, and that used to not be me before. I would look at my competition and be like, there's really no competition, I'm the best in the room. And there really wasn't any growth for that. So there's a lot of things that I went through in my life to be able to, I guess, just be sure of myself today. So thank you for submitting that question. This other question is, wait, actually, the, Bilingual now would like to know the most challenging part of your work today. Optimizing a video. I feel like I get so caught up in like getting everything in order, like the tags, the description. Some part of me wants to get it so incredibly well. Don't like to optimize my video sometimes just because it takes way too long. But then I realized when I don't really put that much effort into it, they turn out to be one of the best performing videos on my channel. So I'm like, I wouldn't say it's challenging, but it is time consuming. I would say video editing for sure. I think there's still that part of me that really wants to find someone that knows my style. I feel like that's a little bit challenging and also time consuming when you're trying to find someone that fits your style. Thank you for submitting it. So the next question is, this is an interesting one. What should an 18 year old do for starting up in business and investing? Start investing into yourself. Start investing into new skills. The skills that I highly recommend that you invest in yourself into is people skills. Knowing how to communicate with other people because the only way for you to ever start a business is you need people. You need customers, you need clients, you need a team possibly in the future if you're looking to grow your business. So I would definitely say build the skills and dealing with people. People skills it will take you so far. Take it from someone like me who didn't care about people. I mean, I did. It was just deep down in that core somewhere that I just had to like yank it out. Learn more about people than you do anything else and you will be successful, my friend. As far as investing your money, I have a particular video on how I speak about how you should invest. When you get a paycheck, 70% goes to your bills. And then if you're in debt, another 10% goes to paying off your debt, just 10% of that paycheck. But if you're not in debt, take 20%. That 20% of your paycheck goes straight to investing, whether it's investing back into your business, whether it's investing into uh, rental properties or stocks or crypto or Bitcoin. 
whatever it is that you want to grow your money in, 20% goes to that if you are debt free. It is highly crucial that you are responsible and you pay people back. So if you are in debt, 10% goes to paying off your debt. You will be debt free within like five to seven years. I know some people become debt free earlier than that. And then lastly, the 10%, which people really don't care about, and that used to be me, is giving back to the poor. I'm not saying back to the church, I'm saying back to the actual poor, people that actually can help themselves. Because it is a financial principle, it will make you money. Only a few will actually take the time to take that step. I know it took me years to take that step and therefore I was just running and chasing after money and burning myself out. But when I made that principle into my life, I never had the need of money ever again. I'm very grateful for that because I'm contributing in the community. But I always say, start investing into yourself and everything else will, will, will follow. And all the ideas and everything that you need to grow something will come from you because you're investing into yourself, you're investing into skills and you can't really help yourself to grow something. Next question, it says, what is the hardest challenge you've overcome? Um, I guess is when I got fired from Grand Cardone and I know that's like so lame for some people but I literally moved my whole life from going to Atlanta to Miami and having that taken away from me where a job was bringing in the income was providing for my needs was really hard for me because I've never been fired in my life. So that was pretty humbling for me. I learned a lot from it. I would say it was a very hard time for me. Um, I know I could have gotten out of it a lot sooner, but it was probably one of the hardest things I went through. Um, just, you know, when you have no income coming in, it's like, what do you do and all that kind of stuff? What do you do with your life? But it challenged me and it helped me to start things that I love today, businesses. Another hardest thing would be when I was in burnout and that was about a year and a half ago and I couldn't get out of it. It was really, really tough for me. At that point, I really didn't have anything else left in me. And so I knew that I had to make a change in my life. I literally left Miami and I just moved to a different state. I went to Texas, not knowing anybody really. I didn't know I had friends there. I really didn't know I would know people there, but I didn't go for that. I didn't go because I had friends there. I went there because I wanted a change in my life. Even though I was going through a very challenging time before that, I know making that transition, making that move out of faith changed my whole life today. It flourished my relationship with my boyfriend today. YouTube, it did a lot of different things and I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't gone through a really, really hard time. And I'm not gonna go into details into it, but I know eventually down the road, I will get very personal with that story, but it gets really, really personal and we don't have all the time in the world to talk about it today. So if you are interested and I would actually have the balls to do it, um, just comment below and I would definitely make a video on how tough it was and what all I had to go through and how I really truly got myself out of it. So that was really hard for me, really, really hard. So I love this question. Thank you, I love you. Let's see what else we got here. This question says, what is the most expensive things in this universe in your point of view? When you spend rather than investing little by little, whether it's like that Starbucks coffee, five bucks, whatever, no big deal. But if you do that on a regular basis, it turns to be extremely expensive over time. So just switching that mindset from spending to investing, when instead of choosing instant gratification, instead of choosing things off of your feelings, oh, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I love Starbucks, I'm really thirsty or whatever, I wanna get something from there. And you know, I'm not bashing Starbucks, I think they know exactly how to do business, which is great. But all I'm saying is train your mind to be governor of your finances. Don't have someone else, a great marketer like Starbucks is taking your money. So having a purpose for your money. So instead of spending, investing it and over time, whether it's spending or investing, it, it multiplies, it gets bigger and bigger. What is the thing that you wanna grow? You wanna grow your spending or you wanna grow your investing? If you grow your spending, that's pretty expensive. I don't look at the word expensive as, oh, you know, I can't afford it. It's more like it's out of the value of my dollar. I don't want that and I'm okay of not. I'd much rather take that $300,000 in investing 
into rental properties or stocks or things like that, having that money to grow instead of getting a car because for what? I don't know, maybe I'm different, but I would say maybe cars. I know sometimes maybe houses are pretty expensive depending on how you do it. I just don't believe in like going into debt for liabilities. I do feel like a house is a liability. It's just where you put your money, what kind of decisions you make with your money and how can you make it grow? How can you start small? I feel like with people, it's like they need to get somewhere first in order to start investing. No, you can start off small, just like I told you. Start off 10%, start off 20% if you're out of debt. Start there and it'll continue to multiply as it has for me. So it's all about starting small, little by little. He who is faithful with the little will be a ruler over much, much more. It's the small increments that we do on a, on a regular basis, whether it's making us money or not. And ideally, the goal is to have money work for you. Have money be your slave rather than vice versa. Rather than you being a slave of money, rather than business owning you, rather than time owning you, rather than life owning you, how can you own your time? How can you own your business? own your money that's a great question i'm really glad you asked it thank you so much i really appreciate you participating here's another one skincare routine to look always so gorgeous you're so sweet thank you so much i actually did start a skincare routine not too long ago i'd love to share it with you i was having like floss on my faces and kind of like scars in a way from like my pimples and stuff so i decided to just wanting to repair my face and not only did it repair it it also like softened it and um, sometimes I go days without makeup just because I don't need it, just because my face has been fully replenished and repaired. And I mean, I love to share it with you. I've never done this before, but let's just have fun doing it. <laughs> so let's see. What I usually do is I wake up, do a look like a 15 to 20 to 30 minute workout in my room. And then I get in the shower and I actually have my cleanser in my shower that I forget to bring here. But it's a cleanser that I use to wash my face, to wash all like whatever bacteria it's been on my face overnight, I don't know. Just wash it all off and then as soon as I get off the shower, I start putting this amazing thing. Vitamin C skin defense, defense. Vitamin skin, can you see that? Uh no i know people do this in their videos i don't know what's the point of it but it's not working for me okay so it just says vitamin c skin defense and it is daily defense cream by melaleuca i've been buying from melaleuca for like close to five years now what i put after is the vitamin c defense and repair treatment serum there we go so just one pump just because a lot of it comes out just one pump and then I just start right below my eyes and then I move directly up in my forehead and then the rest of my face so I do this one second and then um, this one is wrinkle release eye serum so I don't do it every single day just sometimes really and one pump just because a lot comes out of it not so much but a good bit and then I just kind of rub it on my fingers and then I do it like right next to my eyes. Cause you know, sometimes we see like little wrinkles here and there, like right next to the eyes. So I just do it next to it. And then of course I move in down here, but mainly I focus a lot over here just because when we smile and we squint, you know, so I just do that. So I do that one with that one. And then I, this is the last thing that I would put on my face for to start my day. That is a daily soothing lotion. I know. So I would just put all this lotion all over my face. And then I would also put it on my neck. And then I would do some like neck exercises to be able to release a double chin. I don't even really have one, but it's always good to like exercise those muscles <laughs> also i go back in the back of my neck and i massage the back of my neck and have a little bit of stress or whatever so i just do that with less tension and i pop my neck and then go from there and then and the night routine i don't usually use many products when i go to sleep they have like different lines uh, melaleuca has different skin lines so they have this one vitamin c they have like other ones like this one this is a different line of skincare so this one is cream to oil overnight repair. And I love it. Like I love the texture and the smell. Oh, she would smell. 
I thought it was gonna be overpowering just because I don't like oranges. I know I don't like oranges. <laughs> and I was scared that it was gonna be so overpowering with the smell, but it's not. And I love it, I'm so thankful. So I just, I really love the texture. And then another one that I would add into is the Deep Marine Age Protection. You can see it right there. And this one is Age Defying Overnight Cream. So I put that legitimate over the one that I just got done putting on, and then I do this one. So yeah, that is my morning and night routine. I hope you just love it as much as I do. Again, everything will be provided in the link below. If you're interested in buying some of these skincare lines, skincare products, let me know. There's a particular link down there that you can just send me a quick message and then I get back to you. So again, thank you so much for watching. This was actually so much fun. And if you enjoyed it, just let me know in the comments and I would love to do more videos like these. So if you also enjoyed it, make sure you like, if you want people to watch any of this part of this message that really resonated with you or you know it resonated, could resonate with someone else, make sure you share it with them. And thank you again so much for watching this whole thing. I really enjoyed this time with you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day. <laughs>